I've been working on a side project and I decided to use Superbase on that side project for a couple of different reasons. And I wanted to kind of share my thoughts and my first insights into Superbase. Do I like it? Do I not like it? And kind of give you a walkthrough of like some of the functionality you can kind of do with it. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new project. So go over here, I can call this like Burger Hunt and just go ahead and generate like a strong password. Region could be US East one, pricing free. Whatever, go ahead and create this. And what Superbase basically does is it sets up a database for you, but it also has a bunch of useful features kind of wrapping the Postgres database that they create for you. And one of those interesting features is basically an API that allows you to read and write from a database without having to set up a bunch of backend API endpoints, right? They, they create the API for you. It's very generic and you can do whatever queries that you want from it. Okay. so. Let's kind of just walk you through a little bit. I'm not going to do a full tutorial about Superbase. I'm just going to like kind of brush the surface and give you my thoughts on it. So after you create your Superbase project, you can basically create tables using their nice UI here. You can like name stuff. You can create columns, specify the data types for the columns. And it's a nice user experience or developer experience on top of like having to write SQL statements and SQL migration scripts yourself. And I'll kind of give you a quick overview of how this, some of this stuff works. But another cool feature is you have a bunch of authentication out of the box. So if you wanted to allow users to basically register using their email and a password, you can easily hook into Superbase authentication and wrap all your next application with like middlewares to verify your sessions and set up your sessions. They got like starter projects and stuff like that. But the main things I want to cover in this project is just like showing you an example query and showing you how you can potentially run all this stuff locally, right? I'm just kind of brushing over various features of Superbase that I've learned over the past couple of days. The first thing is when you have a project, you have the ability to spin up a locally running Superbase instance. I'm gonna start with NPX Superbase init, and that's gonna set up like a, a directory over here that has like some configurations and stuff, is we're gonna say NPX Superbase start. I wanna show you what this does. If you have Docker installed, this pulls down a bunch of different Docker containers and basically spins up a locally running Superbase setup. Okay, so after it's done, you get like all these different um, keys and stuff you can use. I'm gonna grab the Anon key and put it here. And I'm gonna also grab the API URL and put it here. So now when I run my project, my next project, it's going to point to my locally running database, which is on various URLs. But the thing I wanna point out is you have a studio URL. If I click on this, you will see that you basically see the exact same dashboard that we saw on the Superbase login, but this dashboard has all the same functionality or close to all the same functionality that you can do when you're actually messing around with the live production service. All right, so if you're a smaller team, like one or two developers, one workflow you could do is that you all have a production database. And then when you work locally, you're using this local host 54323 to kind of do things with your schema, et cetera. Now there's a lot I can cover in Superbase. I'm just trying to brush over like some of the key things that I think are important. And since Superbase is mainly focused around like a database, I wanna show you how migrations work because I think this is super important as well. So one thing you can do locally is you can link your local project up to your actual like production project. So I can go ahead and say like project, uh, I think it's called project link or ID. Let's see if this is it. Uh, it's called project ref, just try that. So enter your database password or leave blank to skip. So you might want to add in your database password so you can actually like apply migration scripts to your database. So I'm going to go back to my database over here and let's go to settings, go to database. And um, I'm going to reset the database because I, I don't even know what it was. Let's copy it. I'm going to go ahead and paste it in here. And I want to make sure I save that so it does reset. So now my locally running Superbase instance is linked up to my project up here. And I'll show you what the purpose of that is in just a second. Um, the first thing I wanna do is, let's say you wanted to create a new table to store some data in your project. How would you do that? Well, if you go to your locally running Superbase editor, you can go into your table editor and I can say, okay, I wanna create a new table. I can name this like burger joints. And then we can go down here, we can set up some columns. Uh, maybe we add one called name or something, and that could be a string or text. Um, let's do text. Maybe you want to use a var I don't know. But that's probably good enough. Let's just save this. And now we have a table that exists locally that we can actually do queries against and whatnot. 
Okay, so let's kind of show you this. I'm gonna go to the most basic page I can find. So let's run my little project here. That should connect to my super base. And then I'm gonna go ahead and load up my app here. All right, so now we have the app running, Burger Hunt, find a burger, um, and we got a sign in button. But what I wanna show you is like, we have a database now. We have like a, a table called joints or burger joints. And let's say we wanted to query this table and get all the data displayed in our UI. This is one of the coolest things about Superbase, I would say, is that you can do database queries directly from your front end code. Notice that this is a page that has used client, so this will all run on the client. But what I want to do is when this page basically loads, just do a use effect. And I'm going to go ahead and just do like a, an Axios fetch here. I'm going to go ahead and just call using the super base here. Um, if you import super base client, I do have a, a lib folder. If I look at this, what this is doing is basically creating a browser client. Okay, this is importing create pages browser client from auth helpers next.js. Um, it's just a nice little helper that basically has authentication set up in it. But if I import this, I can actually start doing some queries against my database directly. So for example, if I wanted to, let's just do this. I can't really use async await here, so I'll just do this. And I'm gonna go ahead and change this. So I'm gonna say super base from, and then I'm gonna say burger joins because that is the table that we just created, right? And we want to just select everything. And once we've gotten everything back, I'm gonna go ahead and just say like locations, and then I'm gonna console log the locations here. Okay, make sure I auto import use effect. So now this should return no data. And if we were to go in, actually let me print out locations.data because there might not be anything. All right, let's do a hard refresh and notice that we get down here at the bottom, it says locations of nothing, right? So this actually did a query against our database directly from our front end. And that's pretty cool, right? You didn't have to write an API. This just does the logic. Um, so let's actually add a little bit of data. And I want to just kind of drive this point home. I'll insert a row. And we'll just say like this is Bob's Burger Shop. Something like that. Go ahead and click save. Now we have a piece of data here. If I go back and refresh this, so you'll see we're not getting any data back. And I do believe it's because we set up row level security, which means that like no one has access to actually read this data from the front end, right? So what we can do is we can create policies. This is how you can kind of set up permissions with superbase slash postgres. And I'm just going to go ahead and create a template one. And you can just kind of look through these. They have four different templates you can use. But as you get more experience with these policies, you can make them like more complex. For example, you can make it so that only certain users can delete certain rows. What we're going to do is we want all users to be able to read from public.burgerjoints, right? So let's just go ahead and use this template. And I'm going to go ahead and say true. And if I save this policy, that policy will be applied to my table. And now I think if I were to refresh my page, we get back data about those burger joints, okay? So what I just showed you is that like when you create a table, it's basically no one can get the data out of that table until you create policies. And now that you have a policy that specifies if you're a public user trying to read data, allow them to do it. All right, so now I wanna show you like one of the coolest things about Superbase. So I kind of set all the tables up and policies up locally on my locally running Superbase instance, but how do we get this data pushed over to our production database and our production project here, right? So again, this tab right here is my local, this tab is production. And notice that production has no tables and it has no policies. How do I take the things that I created locally and migrate those over, right? So the first thing you can do is you say npx super base, and I can say db diff. And I'm gonna go ahead and just say like, um, creating a burger joint table, okay? What this does is it compares your locally running Postgres database against the production database and it figures out your migration scripts for you, and it'll create a migration script using the name that you provided here. All right, so now that that's done, let's go to our migrations here, and you'll see that we have a new migration script that was created for us automatically. This is kind of like Prisma, where it just figures stuff out for you. It uses like a shadow database right here. You can see it says shadow database. So now we got all of the migration scripts set up, and now how do we get that pushed over to our remote database? So I can just say superbase db push, 
and that is going to run that new migration script against your production database. So now if I go back here, notice that on production, or I mean, this could be like staging or test or whatever, you could have different projects for different environments. I now have the burger joints table. And if I look at the policies, the policies are also migrated over. So that is kind of how you do migrations on Superbase. And I kind of like that, it's pretty cool. And again, you can do like more complex things, like you can have more complex policies, um, more complex integrations and stuff like that. But overall, that's kind of like what I wanted to show in this video is like, how do you basically do like the local development on Superbase, set up migration scripts, push them locally, and then also push them to production. There's a bunch more I wanted to talk about, but I'll probably say that for other videos. I want to talk about authentication in a little bit and probably do some more advanced policies when I have time. But hopefully this little overview was good and you guys liked it. So far, I like Superbase. I think it's pretty cool. There's some things I'm kind of iffy about, for example, like the row level policies kind of couples you to Postgres. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. But if you just want to rapidly prototype an application, I think this is a pretty cool way to do it just by doing these queries directly in the front end. I kind of like it. It's, it's kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, comment, like, subscribe, press the bell icon. And like always, I have a Discord channel. You're welcome to join if you want to find a place to hang out with some other developers or just ask me questions directly. Have a good day and happy coding.